All right, welcome back to Fast Gadgets. So what are we going to do today? Well, I've got a system back here. It's an older system. It's an AMD 1055T now. In previous videos, I've been calling it a 1090T, but it's actually a 1055T. Right now, I've got it overclocked with some automated overclock settings in the motherboard. Normally, it runs at 2.8 gigahertz, but it's actually overclocked to 3.07 gigahertz. What I'd like to do is do some experimentation and see what I can get this system overclocked to maximally. It's running pretty good right now and it does pretty good job uh, rendering videos, but I'd like to see if I could get a little bit more speed out of it. So just for those of you who don't know, the 1055T is an AMD processor normally running at 2.8 gigahertz. It has six cores and it's known as a Phenom X2, or sorry, Phenom 2 X6. So the X6 indicates how many cores that it has. So we're gonna overclock it now and see what we can get. So far, the Fedora 26 installation I did on this system has been extremely stable and I'm really happy with it. Uh, I haven't done too awful much testing on it, but I'm really hoping that I can boost the overall processing speed and give that memory a little boost. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and start the restart process. Now, in order to get into the BIOS, I have to use a PS2 keyboard because the USB keyboard, actually the USB bus isn't activated until after the primary boot process. So I'm gonna grab my PS2 keyboard, which I've already hooked up. And I'm gonna go ahead and click restart now. Okay, so my current speed, I was wrong. I'm actually at 3.08 gigahertz. So halfway decent, performance is doing pretty well. Honestly, I can't complain too much. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go into the BIOS and over here in T-Series, I'm using the automated overclocking and I have the V6 tech engine right now. And I think I can go up to V8. Now what I'm gonna have to do is monitor overheating. So what I'm gonna do is cruise on over to advanced and then hardware health configuration. And I have a shutdown temperature of 80 degrees Celsius set. Um, I think for this system, it's probably good enough. I don't really want to go any higher than that. So right now the CPU fans running at about 2800. It will ramp up as needed. CPU temperature 41 degrees, 40 degrees Celsius. It will ramp up when it's processing. So we'll do a test and, and see what happens when we do that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go back to T-Series and go to auto overclock and try the V8. And again, like I said before, the V12 I have tried before and it did not work. So I'm gonna leave that part alone. I'm not sure what GPU phase control is. I think I'll leave that alone as well. I like to only make one change at a time and then see what my results are. So we're gonna save configuration changes, exit setup. <clears throat> I'm going to let it reboot. So far, so good. You know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to go back into the BIOS. I'm going to set it back to the V6. Here's why. I want to see what my processing speed is with the V6 enabled. So we'll go to T-Series here, and we'll change this guy back to V6. Uh, save and change exit. Save changes and exit. This time, instead of booting into Linux, I'm going to boot into Windows. Because I want to run a speed test. And I'm going to do Windows 10.
trying to find a working pen here. Not so easy in my house. Okay, in Windows 10. I've been wanting to do this anyway. I have not done a benchmark on this system with Geekbench 4. And we're gonna go ahead and run it. Now I'm gonna close the browser. All right, so my 1090T final compute score running at the V6 overclock. Uh, single is 2328 and multi-core 8721, which I'm really surprised it's that low considering it's a six core processor. For those of you who are curious, let's get this a little bit bigger. I'm running the Biostar TA90 GXE, which is a pretty good motherboard. I've got 16 gigs of RAM. I thought I had 2133, uh, my mistake. So my RAM is running at 734 megahertz. And it is the Phenom 2X6. Uh, I thought I was 1090T, I'm actually the 1055T. So I'm currently running the 1055T. Now it's interesting that the base frequency being reported is 3.63 gigahertz. And I'm gonna turn off overclocking altogether and do a test with overclocking. Seriously? Anyway, I'm gonna uh, <laughs> do an overclock or turn off overclocking altogether and we'll do a test. All right, so again, this was uh, no overclocking and we got a single core of 2155 and a multi-core of 7874, which is definitely slower than the V6 overclocking. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and shut the system down and I'm gonna overclock to the V8. So this is the RAM that I did end up purchasing. I was incorrect in saying that it was 2133 megahertz. It's actually 1866 megahertz DDL3, DDR3. All right, we're back in the BIOS again. I'm gonna go over to T-Series. Whoops, wrong thing. Overclock Navigator, Automate Overclock. And we're gonna try the V8. Okay, so the base clock rate for this processor is 2.8 gigahertz. Normally, I was running it in the V6 setting, which was 3.07 gigahertz, and now running the V8 engine overclock, I'm getting a clock rate of 3.22 gigahertz. All right, we're booting back into Windows again. Where are we? Well, it looks like I'm having a problem with the V8 overclock settings, in particular with graphics. So I think I'm gonna power the system down and let it shut all the way down and then I'll power it back up and we'll see what happens. All right, we're booting back up with the V8 overclock settings and I'm gonna to try to go into Windows again, uh, but it looked like it wasn't gonna work. It wouldn't enter graphical mode in HD, but it's worth a try. No, looks like we got a NTFS sys error. So it doesn't look like I'll be able to overclock to the V8 settings, unfortunately. Let's see if I can get a control alt delete. Nope, no control, delete. We're gonna try something completely different here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off overclocking. Actually, I'll do manual. And I'm going to go to memory config. No, I don't want that one. DRAM timing? Yeah. And I'm gonna change this clock. I'm gonna see if I can speed up the memory to 1333. Now this may make it unbootable. 
we'll see what happens. That's the fun of it, right? Having to tear your computer apart and get it working again. And it was able to boot. So the processor right now is running at 2.8 gigahertz, but I have sped the RAM up. We'll see if we can boot into Windows with the RAM sped up to 1333 and what effect, if any, it will have. Okay, with the RAM set at 1333, I noticed that it said that RAM was running at 667 megahertz. Let's see if we can find that. Yeah, right there, memory running at 667 megahertz. When I was running it with V6 settings, the automated settings in the BIOS, it was running the RAM at 734 megahertz. So that might be about the best I can do. So I think I'm going to leave it at the V6 settings. One last thing I'd like to try, I think I'm going to go into DRAM timing and go ahead and try out 1600 and see what we can do. And I'm going to try and boost the reference clock to 210 megahertz and see what happens. Interesting that it found the CMOS checksum to be bad. I'm going to go ahead and run setup again. Pretty smart system how it uh, was able to detect issues. I'll just do a slight clock adjust. Go back into memory config. Whoops, DRAM timing. See if I can get that RAM to run at DDR3.16. Hard to say which thing it doesn't like, so I'm going to make one setting change. Go back to manual. I'm going to go back to the original 2.10. And I think with DRAM, I'm just going to leave it at auto. See what we get. So it is going by so fast, I can't even see what speed it's running at. I don't like this flash screen. I may need to disable it and get rid of it. Press tab to show the text screen. I should be able to see it. All right. So I have the speed to 2.94 gigahertz. I know that I can do at least 3.07. So I really don't know how much this will help. Probably just easier to use the V6. I mean, I could mess around and maybe get it to 3.10 or 3.12, but, oh, what the heck, let's try it. I'm going to go back into T-Series, and I'm going to do... for clock and let's see if we can handle it. All right, so we got 3.22. Uh, experience has been that at that, that's like the V8 overclock. I don't think that's going to work well, so I'm going to go back in, and I think I'm going to take it down just a couple of megahertz. So we'll try 227. Uh-oh. Looks like she locked up just being in the BIOS. You know when you lock up in the BIOS, you're in real trouble. It did let me do a control all delete though, oddly enough. Yeah, I don't think I can do that uh, 3.22. We're gonna try this again, see if we can make that change. I think I'm gonna go for the gold here. How about 228? Maybe I just didn't hit enter earlier. That's probably what it was. Okay. Hmm. Doesn't like the settings. I'm really surprised. 
because it just booted well I really think it just can't handle it um, also it might be that the voltages change with this automated v6 tech engine setting so I'm gonna go ahead and do a reboot I think I'm gonna leave it with the v6 tech engine settings I think the bottom line is what I'm looking at is a motherboard upgrade here in the future all right well what did I find out well I don't think I'm going to be overclocking this system any more than it already is. Quite frankly, it's pretty old, so it's actually running great. It is very responsive and a good system for what I do with it. Now, when I do render videos in Linux, pretty typically what I see is a render time of about 80% of the actual video time when rendering 1080p. So if I have a video that's oh let's say 10 minutes it usually renders it in about eight minutes which isn't too bad for 1080p 4k well that's a whole different matter and it's going to take quite some time my goal in the future is to upgrade to ryzen 1700 uh, processor but that's going to be a while so will i limp along with this system absolutely it still runs great and it still renders 1080p fine and uh, the setting and the monitor and all the things that I do make it perfect for me for what I'm doing for right now. But later down the road, we'll definitely see an upgrade. Thank you for watching. Hope you take a minute to like and subscribe and share if you think about it. And I'll see you next time on Fast Gadgets.